Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajana here, and today's talk is going to be on stress and digestion. So many people anecdotally know that when they feel stressed, they aren't digesting food well. They may get bloaty or gassy, and they may just feel like there's a break in their stomach. And the question is, why? Is this something that's just more energetic or an emotional thing, or is there an actual physiological reason to why stress messes with your digestion? So let's review and kind of break it down. So when we eat food, this is you right here. This is your esophagus and leading into your stomach. So the big S stands for stomach. The main job of the stomach is to break down protein. So what happens is we start producing hydrochloric acid. So HCl. I'm going to draw it in a couple places here. And HCl's main job is to lower the pH of the stomach. And then a nice acidic pH is very important. It does a few things. It activates protein enzymes known as pepsin. I'm going to just draw some P's in here. Pepsin gets activated, and pepsin's main job is to break down protein. So P for pepsin, it's a proteolytic or protein digesting enzyme. That's really important. It gets the, the ball rolling regarding digestion of starting to break down protein. That low pH also provides an inhospitable environment for bacteria, fungus, parasites, viruses, etc. That low pH is really, really important for creating a defense mechanism or a barrier or a force field against foreign invaders. So again, we're increasing protein, digesting enzymes, we're creating an inhospitable environment, and also, if the food is not digested properly, what starts to happen is we get inflammation. We'll have bacterial overgrowth. We'll start having uh, fermentation or rancidification or putrefication. Essentially, the protein, fat, and carbs you're eating begins to rot. And that can actually create inflammation. So if you see this, this black lining here, this is a mucosal lining around the, the stomach area. And when that starts to thin down because of inflammation, it's called atrophic gastritis. We're thinning out that stomach lining. And this is where we can start getting ulcers, we can start getting tummy problems, we can start getting heartburn. And that typically happens when we start having a dysbiotic bacteria coming in and we have higher amounts of bad bacteria in relationship to good bacteria. And typically we have more good than bad, about 80 to 90% good to 10 to 20% bad. And when that starts shifting, we have all kinds of problems. Now, we can even have different infections like H. pylori. H. pylori can, can just knock out HCL. We can just cross off a couple HCLs if we have an H. pylori infection. That's a bacterial infection. Also, when the food rots inside your stomach, we start seeing an increase in interabdominal pressure. So imagine this here. We see interabdominal pressure go up like this. And when interabdominal pressure rises, it's very, very common to have GERD or, or gastroesophageal reflux disorder where some of this acid here can actually rise up and it can burn the esophagus because you can see the esophagus does not have this protective barrier. The cells in the esophagus are different. And eventually, if you keep on burning those cells, you can have a change in that esophagus known as Barrett's esophagus. It's a, it's a different um, disease pathology. But again, it all starts with a functional issue, right? You're not able to digest protein properly. And the question is why? So let me go back to that first question. So we mentioned why does stress affect digestion? Well, what it does is it activates the sympathetic nervous system. That's the fight or flight. You're either going to run from your enemy or you're ready to fight. So again, when we activate our sympathetic nervous system, so when our SNS increases, all of our blood goes towards our extremities, our arms, our hands, and our feet. And the question is why? It's going there so we can mobilize glucose and we have the ability to power our muscles and run to fight to get away and we potentially start sweating too because you want to be slippery in case our enemy grabs us. So this is what's happening. Our SNS is activated and this isn't good because it's going to shuttle a lot of the digestive juices away. It literally turns off our digestive capacity. Now just think, remember the last time you got in a fight with your partner or your spouse? Think of the last time you saw maybe a really gruesome scene on TV or in a horror movie. What happened to your digestion? Well, if you think back, it just goes right away. And why? Well, the question is, the reason why is we're activating our fight or flight or our sympathetic nervous system. We're shunting blood towards the extremities to run and fight. That's why. 
To enhance digestion, we have to increase our parasympathetic nervous system. So our parasympathetic, our PNS. So if we increase the PNS, we actually do the opposite. We bring blood back towards the core. Now our parasympathetic nervous system is known as our rest and digest. It's bringing blood flow back to the organs, back to the digestive tracts to help break things down, to help pull away nutrition. And it's also an important part of the nervous system that, that activates the whole hydrochloric acid and all of these enzymes are happening from occurring and, and, and doing the normal thing they're supposed to be doing, which is breaking down protein, fat, and carbohydrates. So this kind of shows you how stress actually affects digestion. It's changing how blood is being pushed into your body. It's either going out or it's going in. And when it's going in, we have the ability to activate all these enzymes and all these acids and break down protein and fat properly. Now, if we're chronically, if we're chronically in this sympathetic state here, if this is a chronic situation, this is typically when infections start to occur because we're constantly shunting blood away we're decreasing hydrochloric acid, and eventually we're going to get an infection. So in a chronic state, this equals infection. So it's really important that you're managing your digestion because this is where all the problems come from, where you may start doing things to activate the PNS again, your parasympathetic nervous system, but because you have an infection, it's continuing to keep you locked into this stressed out state and it will prevent you from getting better. So let's look at a couple of action items here. Well, first thing that you can do, action items. The first thing you can do here is you can take some HCL. HCL can be very helpful. And some people even do better combining it or getting an HCL combined product that has enzymes and or bile salts in there as well. So HCL and enzymes. Um, next, don't eat when you're stressed. Don't eat when you're stressed. Give yourself time to rest and relax, to hydrate before you eat. Remember when you hydrate, it actually can dilute some of these enzymes and acids down and bile salts. We want to make sure we're doing our best to, to eat or to drink Nah, at least 10 minutes away from meals or two hours after. That can be really helpful. Next, if you're chronically stressed or you have chronic GI issues, again, cutting out food allergens are going to be really helpful. Food allergens put a lot of stress on the body. And if you're chronically ill or you're having lots of problems digestion-wise and you work with people and you're not quite getting the results you're looking for, the last step that I typically find are infections. There's some chronic infections there, and, and that infection connection, if you will, is really, really important to providing a, a roadblock to healing. So if you're going paleo, if you're cutting out gluten and grain and dairy, and you're still not getting better, the infection connection may be the link that's holding you back. So for more questions or for more information on this, check, my, check out my YouTube channel, check out my, my blog page. Uh, feel free and, and check out below if you want to get assessed or look a little deeper into your digestion and what may be the roadblocks from from stopping you from healing, feel free and let me know. All my information is below and I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Thanks. Have a great day.